And also in Parliament, uh, um, the Labour Party has been outspoken on this issue too. Uh, early on in the uh, sanctuary, I think on day, day three, uh, we were joined by the le leader of the opposition, Andrew Little, um, and he has shown great courage, I think, in, in, in raising this uh, issue. Uh, we're joined today by William Suicio and uh, Priyanka Radhakrishnan, and I'd like to ask them to both come up from the Labour Party. Fakurunga keo ki te tangi tui, tui, tuia, tuia ki runga, tuia ki raro, tuia ki waho, tuia ki te here tangata ti hei Māori ora. E ngā mana, e ngā iwi, e ngā reo, e ngā haue whā, e ngā karangaranga maha, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. I want to acknowledge, uh, firstly, Tingilau, Ness, for the mihi at the beginning and for welcoming us all here today. I also want to particularly acknowledge uh, Reverend Ray and the, this church, Joe, and the union movement, and thank you for standing in solidarity with these students, with the migrant workers. Look, I'm here, myself and Priyanka are here on behalf of Andrew Little, leader of the Labour Party, who could not be here, but sends his best wishes to you and sends his solidarity support to the, the group that are here. I couldn't help but sort of reflect a bit as a young man in the 1970s, and I remember what happened in that era called the Dawn Raids. And this is one of those churches. This is one of the churches that, in, in addition to the faith community of Auckland, who stood in solidarity with the Pacific people who were initially invited here. <laughs> to fill the jobs of the manufacturing communities, uh, manufacturing industry. And then, for one reason or another, we, the, the government of the time decided to get rid of them. And my house was one of those houses that were raided at four o'clock in the morning in Otara, South Auckland. And we had a number of cousins living with us. Four of them were here legally, but three of them had overstayed their permit to a number of reasons. And um, it was the faith community in Auckland who came to our aid, who stood in solidarity with us. And this is one of the meeting halls. Am I right, Tingilau? This is one of the meeting halls, in addition to the Catholic Church down the road in Grey Lynn, that met, that provided lawyers. And it was also the trade union movement of the time who stood in solidarity. So I convey that in a, our way of acknowledging the work of the faith community and the trade union movement and standing in solidarity with these students from overseas. Andrew, for our part, we've, um, Andrew has advocated, met with you, has challenged the government on their policy. And this is an issue where the government, if it wanted to, could have used their powers of discretion. But this week, in the questions that were posed to him, the minister decided not to use those powers of discretion. I want to say to the students that I think the decision that you've made is right, that you will return. But as I said to you earlier, I hope that your experience thus far hasn't dampened your desire to migrate to New Zealand, and the opportunity is still there with you. We may have lost the fight, but this country here, the battle continues for fairness. The battle continues to remove discrimination. The battle continues that we treat everybody with dignity and respect. And it's, it's sad in many ways for those of us who are migrants to, one, on the one hand, invite people from the Asian countries to come here and spend their money in our universities, in our tertiary institutions, but treat you just as fast as they invited you. And, you know, the, somebody also who speaks a different language, whose English is a second language, I fully understand that often you may have signed a form, but you may not have understood 
what was in that form. It happens with my relatives all the time who migrate from Samoa. And so Andrew has told me we're fighting this battle to win this year's election. As opposition, we don't have the powers that the government has. We have a voice which we have used. But if we did win this year's election, when we do win this year's election, it would be our policy that we would fully investigate this whole industry, that those who are found to be fraudulent would be held accountable. And I think we would go further and review each victim's case because I think if you look at the substance of those individual cases, I suspect that you could, you could have, if the minister wanted to, allow you, based on the merits of your case, to have stand here. So, look, I'm going to ask my colleague Priyanka to say some final words. But again, let me say on behalf of Andrew Little and the Labour Party, we wish you the best. I hope that you do reapply to return. And I hope that you'll have a better experience than you've had thus far. To the faith community, earlier this week in the House, I acknowledge the work that you did. I acknowledge the work that you do on a number of areas of housing, on education, on health. And it, I want to acknowledge the fact that you've raised your voice here. I think our country, for some reason or rather, is heading to, into an environment where your voice is critical where the union voice is critical. In addition to the political voices, we need those voices. As I said to the students earlier, New Zealand is not a Donald Trump country, and we don't want the country to head towards that direction. And so the voices of the faith community, the voices of my political colleagues who are here from the Green Party and others, the voices of the trade union movement is going to be critical to ensure that we do remain a country that is respectful, that praises diversity, holds up diversity as a strength, and recognises the dignity and, and worth of our citizens of the human race. Kia kaha, everybody. Kia ora koutou. Namaste, satsriakal. Um, and a very good afternoon to all of you. My name is Priyanka Radhakrishnan, and I'm a Labour candidate and work with the party as well. Um, I've, I've said, I've met with the students a few times, um, and I've said to a couple of people in the past that initially when this was brought to my attention, I must admit I was a little bit sceptical. But when I met with the students and they explained to me what had happened, I immediately understood where they were coming from and what the situation was because... I'm familiar with cases in my life from back home in India, people who are very close to me, who are articulate, who, for whom English is a first language, who were and can be sort of lulled into a context that's very different to the context that we know and understand here in New Zealand. And therein lies the difference. The context that we are talking about and my personal experience with people who've done this in the past have alluded to is a context wherein forms are signed. Forms are signed without um, um, a lot of detail going into it by the person who's signing that form because that's the way it is. Someone I know very well left a visitor visa up to a travel agent. She knew English really, really well. For some language may well be a problem, but for even those for whom it isn't, that is the system, and I think that's what we've got to understand is, is the fundamental difference between contexts. And when we understand that the New Zealand context is very different to, a many, to many other contexts, we then understand what this group and many others like them have potentially been exposed to. And then we don't blame the victims. I came to New Zealand as an international student myself, and understanding the Indian context very well. I have some idea of what you were facing, and I just want to say that firstly, that I'm really sorry that you haven't been offered the justice that you deserve, but it also makes me really angry, 
and it motivates me. And for that, thank you. Thank you for standing up. Thank you for highlighting an issue that is systemic here in New Zealand. I, the only reason that I've been propelled into politics and to try and get into parliament is a commitment to social justice, is an experience or a lifetime of working with some of the most vulnerable members of our society, women who've been abused, migrant workers who've been exploited, and international students who've fallen victim to a system. So I don't have a lot to add in terms of the detail. I think Joe and Sua and Catherine have covered that really, really well into a lot of detail. The only thing I wanted to highlight is that we must be mindful that contexts are different. And I just want to also acknowledge the Unitarian Church and members, the broader faith community, politicians who've stood up, including Andrew Little, the union movement that has supported, and also some of the community and cultural organizations like the Telugu and Telangana associations that have provided support um, in the past. And I, my commitment to you is, if I do get into Parliament, to absolutely keep fighting the fight for you. Please feel free, I've said this to you in person, to keep in touch, whether it's by email or Facebook or whatever other means. And from the bottom of my, of my heart, I wish you all the very best only. Thank you. Thank you.